welcome again guys uh, we are talking about different industrial food productions and this video is very 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 short video is about the threonine biosynthesis so threonine so let's talk about threonine production okay so we'll be just talking about uh, the threonine biochemistry or threonine production biochemically and actually nowadays the production of threonine commercially is mediated by certain E. coli strains because we find a different uh, E. coli uh, theonine uh, operon that involves three different genes theonine A, theonine B and theonine C side by side placed to produce theonine there so we instigate this type of bacterial strain we develop this type of bacterial strain so that they produce our desired product more for example, uh, a bacteria needs threonine, they require aspartate, they require glutamate, they require everything for their growth. So, but we focus on something, we change, we modify their gene using recombinant DNA technology in such a way so that it produces threonine more than any other an, uh, amino acid. So, for that purpose here, this operon come to play very importantly. So, these mutant strains are very much important in developing many different type of anti, uh, many different type of uh, uh, amino acids like threonine or lysine and so on. So the production, the biosynthesis pathway of threonine is very much similar with lysine biosynthesis and so on. But lysine biosynthesis is mediated by Corynebacterium glutamicum, while the threonine biosynthesis is mediated by E. coli strain. Okay, so let's begin. In this case, uh, in this case, if we start with uh, uh, so, so the normal process is beginning with aspartate or aspartic acid whatever so aspartate is there the first stage is the phosphorylation of aspartate to aspartyl sorry aspartyl phosphate so from aspartate we get so make, it, make it a change there yeah from aspartate we produce aspartyl phosphate right and for this process is normally mediated here by aspartyl kinase or aspartokinase Okay, so aspartate is being produced. This aspartokinase is a product of theonine A, I remind you. Here comes the role of first gene. Now, once you get aspartyl phosphate, that is getting dehydrogenase activity. So, it, it is again, so here comes the aspartyl dehydrogenase. Aspartyl dehydrogenase. And it will convert this aspartyl phosphate into aspartyl aldehyde aspartyl aldehyde now once they produce aspartyl aldehyde it's simply another mode of dehydrogenase activity and this time the dehydrogenase activity here is mediated by homoserine dehydrogenase or HDH now or H is D actually so homoserine dehydrogen is there and it will convert this aspartyl aspar aspartyl aldehyde into homoserine aldehyde so once they produce this homoserine uh, so not actually homoserine aldehyde it's, it's sorry it's it's aspartyl homoserine actually it's Sorry, it's aspartyl homoserine. So from aspartyl aldehyde, homoserine dehydrogenase will act. It will produce aspartyl homoserine. Now once they get the aspartyl homoserine, this aspartyl homoserine will be phosphorylated. It will be phosphorylated by homoserine kinase, and it will produce homoserine phosphate. Right. Now this homoserine phosphate is the last intermediate and from this homoserine phosphate directly aspartate will be directly theonine will be produced via the enzyme called theonine synthase. Theonine synthase and this is the most vital enzyme as you know and I must tell you this this theonine C gene is coding this theonine synthase enzyme. Okay. And this theonine B gene is coding homoserine kinase. This enzyme. 
this is the enzyme. So homocerin kinase is produced by thionine B. So you can see here, thionine A gene is producing uh, the aspart aspartic kinase, thionine B is synthesizing homocerin kinase, and thionine C is synthesizing uh, this thionine synthase enzyme. So these enzymes along with each other produce thionine which is our desired product and not only we produce that but we modify our E. coli strain in such a way so that it produce more, more and more thionine uh, compared to other amino acids. They will produce other amino acids but in very very few amounts. So how uh, will they cope up with the environment? How they survive there? They survive because we supply the rest of the amino acid from outside but not the thionine. Because if we supply thionine from outside, they might not produce it, right? So we need to uh, do the trick in this case and it will do the job. So that's kind of it and I hope that's helpful.